Good morning everyone and welcome to Safari Wild Earth Safari this morning and my name is Mark Seb is on camera with me sorry I'm trying to stand on a log and it's not working <laughs> it did look nice though I know I couldn't balance there that's not very good welcome to our morning safari this morning it's a little, little bit dark hence our leaving a little bit later tomorrow a little bit of a low mist hanging in the air but it's giving it a bit of a surreal look we're going to head out, we're going to head out to the, towards the gate this morning. I want to go and have a look and see if we can't get those lions. So I hope you're going to join us and hope you're going to enjoy the next couple of hours with us. Patrick in final control and he'll be sending questions through. Enjoy. Kingfishers are up already. Midwest towards the gate. And there's a possibility we will, or you will lose me after Sandy Patch. Just leaving now, heading up to the access road. We'll see how that changes. Fair amount of moisture on the ground. There was a giant land snail, African land snail, in camp this morning. One normally only finds them out in the rain, but there's obviously enough moisture in the air for a snail of that size to be moving around. Elephant tracks over there. So, as I was saying, with this amount of moisture, we might find that, wow, it's a big bull. The cloud will start developing as the sun rises and starts evaporating a lot of this moisture hanging in the air. Some cloud will develop. Now this is all gone, love by side, the other way. We're going to look for elephant a bit later. I think while we've got early morning and darkness, well, not darkness, but this dawn light, I want to go and see if we can find that kill, that buffalo kill. It's a lion that made it. Still in the air and a hint of what's coming. I think we're going to have a cold winter. Cold for us at least.
quite a fresh elephant track going down Aubrey's Road. A lot of elephant tracks. It's time of the year elephants come back into this part of the world. They're getting a little bit of a break for regrowth. And moving into March and April we're probably going to see some wonderful breeding herds or family groups coming down to the dam during the day. Water for swimming and for mudding. Franklin, excuse me, Franklin. Some guinea fowl with the youngsters. children.
think it's still that side. Not too sure where Lion Kill is. He has a lot of tracks. An elephant around. Oh, I might be closer to the gate. vehicle has coming out of the woodwork. Station on Triple N. Copy me. see the kill but I'm not seeing any cats I haven't seen any tracks thing is there's been elephant here and elephant could have seen these lion off strong smell very strong Nice smell for the morning. Yeah. Ashin. Good, good, thanks. Good, Very pleasant smell. These are Globum coins here. Yeah, I don't have the Elephant tracks here is a good possibility that the elephant saw these lion off and they might not be too far but they're certainly not here you could just see the buffalo's horns in the grass it seems to be quite a... Well, I couldn't really tell but just by the position of the horns, now the horns wouldn't be lying vertically if a lot of them the muscle on the neck had been eaten so I'm assuming there's still quite a bit on that carcass well it was worth a try now we just need to get back into our own Catch the ground. The, judging by the size of those elephant tracks, it was a very big bull that was there. And he would have wouldn't have taken much nonsense from those lions. He would have seen them off quite smartly. A good chance that that's why they've left. Lion tracks here. Heading back that way, it actually looks like a male. Ah, uh, yeah. Going into some mobile, but there's also tracks going back that way. Tracks coming out, tracks going in.
Not often we come up onto this road, it's called Triple M. We're running parallel to Zoe's Road, which is first Impala Road, and then it gets to Impala Plains, and then eventually becomes Zoe's Road. We're going to come out on Impala Plains. We are just west of the really open patch of ground on Impala Road. Place where, on my last drive, two days ago, I said goodbye to you all from that open area those elephants and that would have been due east of us the sun rising. We'll see if we can get up to those roads for the sun rising. Spider webs. Very overgrown, obviously not a road that's used very much. And it follows the power line, aesthetically not great. And eventually we'll be 
cleared and will be cut down as a fire break. Some of these golden orb webs are looking quite amazing in this morning light. There's a little bit of dew on them from this very low mist. But I've got you, I don't know if you can go, you can more or less see it. But this spider has obviously been eaten, been taken. This is the main strand that's coming down. You can almost see the golden sheen to it with the sun behind it. But this is a sticky globule of the silk that is used, or the, the type of silk that is spun for the actual catching part of the web. I can get it off of the main strand. Very, very sticky. It's it's, it's almost like a, a glue. But as you can see, it's not part of this main anchoring strand. And I want the main strand. Oh, there we go. That'll never really dry much. This is the this this you could use to sew on a button. This the strand that I have in my hand, exceptionally strong. You could double it up a few times. It's one of the, it is perhaps the strongest compound in nature. The beautiful golden color of it. Not sticky at all. This is the type of silk that the spider works on, walks on. And uh, it has to be very strong and non-sticky. Morning sunshine, beautiful sky. Oh, bound to be a number of them that we're going to have to avoid. Sorry ladies. Be able to get underneath this one. Uh, yeah. Well, let's see if we can find some signs of leopard. There'll be other lion that have come up from the south. Look out for these elephants. Gotta be twenty feet between those two. Birds are making a lot of noise. Low enough to go that way around. Maybe. What is amazing about these spiders is that they pick up the vibration of the vehicle before I even get to them. So a lot of them start heading up away from their web.
least the sticklers are shouting at us. Seems like it, but it would be nice if they're shouting at a leopard. Zebra tracks. Only zebra tracks that are fresh. Elephant and rhino, but rhino is not as fresh as the elephant. Quite fresh elephant track. Maybe we'll find him. Him and them. Our family group joining this set of tracks. Fresh dung and fresh leaves on the ground. Get that bit of mist hanging there. Get in front of this wattle tree. As the sun is just colouring the tops of the trees, looking down into this little valley as it were. You can see a little bit of that mist before it gets burnt away. On the opposite ridge you can quite clearly see the silver cluster leaf amongst all the green. A very distinct line of silver cluster leaf just below the top of the ridge. The ecotone where the seep line is. Looks like a completely different world to what we used to when you get a view like this. Morning light almost looks like a dense forest. Well, elephant have headed south. 
We're going to go around onto Zoe's road and hopefully find them up there somewhere. back onto the road here. Big bull. Hope we can find him. Elephant have gone that way. We might have lost them. But I think there might still be some elephant that went up Zoe's roadway. This is Impala Plain. A small group of Impala just on the northern edge. Very tall grasses. Quite happy. They don't seem to be concerned about much this morning other than feeding. Oh, he has Karula and the Cubs. Oh, one fantastic morning, pretty girl. Oh, we are so lucky. And I don't have my camera. Oh, has it gone up so much already? They have. Hello, pretty girl. I know I should have gone further off the road. Little one, come on, come on, you're okay, you're okay, go to mommy, 
Looks like a little girl. Come little one, go to mommy. It's the shy one. Should have gone further off of the road. I know, oh but go on, get to your mother. <coughs> Karula Mum Pimpan in Pala Plains. Karula and Mum Pimpan in Pala Plains. I wonder, I was in Pala, I was just saying, I was in Pala and in Pala Plains, relatively relaxed. I don't know what's coming their way. Oh my word. I was completely dumbfounded. Where did she go? Oh my word, out in the open. Come go, stop for a bit and let them play or something. Oh, this is fantastic. I guess sometimes you've got to enjoy it without a camera. And Pala are all making a beeline for the denser bush. She's seeing them now. And she's going after them. Little one, stay where you are. Didn't your mother tell you to stay? Seb, I'm going to roll forward. It is a daker as well. Yeah, can't go forward in there. What's most amazing, and I can't see it, is we're going to see it now. Look at that cub, the cub, well, the cub had the same stance as Karula. Trying to get out of the wet grass. Uh, the Impala have seen her now. Welcome to Wild Earth Safari, at its best. And two new additions to our leopard family in this part of the world. <laughs> My name is Mark, and all these impala just off to our right. Hurling verbal abuse at Leopard and her cubs. 
Let's see, we might be able to stay with them just for a little bit. They might be crossing over onto away from us. With these these impala seeing her and shouting at her, there's nothing she can do. She can't there's no way she can stalk them, there's no way she can get anywhere near striking distance to them. One of the benefits of impala is being able to see predators. As long as they can look at it and they're actually running towards her. Yeah, whether it was lion or cheetah even, not much that they would be able to the leopard or the lion or predator would be able to do. Oh wow. climbing the tree again. Honing those skills already. Getting those arm muscles strengthened and down again. <laughs> okay, let's... We're gonna lose them in a couple of minutes. taking your babies away from us. That one's got a little patch on its shoulder. Mm, strong smell of her scent marking. Patrick, if you could do me a favor, channel control, and go on to channel 2 and tell the guys we're on Triple M at Impala Plains Radio. Maybe I can. Henry, if you copy me, we're on Triple M now. little one smelling where she was scent marking. That's a little boy. And I think the other one's a little girl. I'm guessing and not guessing. Um. <laughs> Sorry Seb.
Okay. This is absolutely wonderful, spending so much time with them and having a good, really good look at how strong and healthy they are. Moving into dangerous territory where these other cats are lying. Still a little bit way to go but still quite dangerous territory for it to be moving into. Did he? I didn't see him. Yeah. Huh? I couldn't see him. I want to get them on the ridge, Seb. Yeah. Try and get a close up when they're on the ridge. Oh, from here? Yeah. My Dutch, Chalapan. So, what I will do, follow this one, yeah. I will go to the my Dutch, yeah. tell him to come here, and he can come find me. <laughs> okay. That's the only way. That's what I wanted, that shot there. We got a morning cut out for us. Okay, let's get up. My lion is on that carcass. He's Still a good couple of hundred meters away. <laughs> the Karula look. I'm starting to get nervous. 
Put this line up there. And right, let's get closer. No, got, she's going with the wind. There's not much of a wind, but the, w the air movement is still to the north. Hoping that these youngsters are going to start familiarizing themselves with us. The more time we spend with them, and we keep our distance. And most importantly, she doesn't react too much. To calm down. Okay, Karula, time to turn back into the bush now. Go back up towards Impala to Sandy Patch. <laughs> Youngster chased the bird. <laughs> Anything that moves, they're going to run after. This is the instinctive part of a leopard's life. Because there's a lot of what a leopard does that's instinctive. More so than in lion and, and, and cheetah. This time. Hopefully she's not going in there, she's just going to smell something. Come on, roll forward. I can't even see them now. into this bush here. I didn't see her go in much. But I think that's it. This has got some deep cover. Very dense. This is probably what she's looking for. 
very dense area like this. I remember seeing a kill in this tree some time ago with Ehrman. Probably a place she's looking for to hide them for the day. Franklin shopping further up. Well, what I'm going to do, we'll go further up and see if we can get a glimpse of this lion. That is a very dense Spanish lion. Ideal for a leopard and her cubs. Ideal for her to stash them and go off hunting. factor well to the power of 10 Monday morning blues. Station on Triple M Cobbing. Uh, 
elephant that might be coming across our way soon lovely big car there that I just seen but there was a vehicle there I am I guess in a way intruding without radio contact with these guys looks like what's that lion in the road hyena in the road up ahead beyond the vehicle Karula hopefully will not venture this way Station on Triple M, copy me. Hyena is a little bit cautious because there is a lion there. In the station with Ngala here on Triple M, you copy me? Yeah, Mark, you're just behind you. Um, I'm trying to get hold of you. Hope you don't mind me joining you. I believe it's my daughter Ngala here. Just drag that carcass in a bit further. Also, I was trying to get hold of you. I had Karula with the two-month pimpan on Triple M about 500 yards back. She went west. Ian actually managed to get in there and grab something.
lot of traffic. Hyenas there. As soon as see the front get a glimpse of this line, but the carcass is there, but no sign of the cat. Sorry, go again. She went in in a dip just beyond that white bucky coming down to pull in. Thank you, copy. Thanks very much, Marcus. There's quite a large Tumbuti just in that dip. Thank you, copy. Yeah, thanks. I'm not seeing any of these cats, though. Let's get some traffic do their thing. Carcass is right there with I mean that vehicle's almost on top of it. Hello Annette, sorry sweetheart. Well now we got in Gala there. Okay, thanks. Ina's got something in her mouth. Coming back this way now. Got the tail, the buffalo's tail. Sib. It's like a trophy. Two. Entrails. I don't think that they know that the whole carcass is further in the bush there. I think they might be a little bit wary that it could be, and it could be, still be lying around. Okay, well, we're going to move out of this area. There's a lot of traffic. This is the main road into the Sabi Sands, so there's a lot of private vehicle traffic coming through. Okay, let's see what we can do. Not gonna a hyena in, on that carcass is a little bit deeper in than we would like it to be.
very very strong smell for this time of day right we are going to be going back into we're Taylor now there's something else I would like to try and find for you very exciting morning I'm about to get a little bit more exciting Button quail. Right. Sandy Patch. We are heading further east. <coughs> I want to make my way down towards Twin Dams Road. There was something very exciting there earlier. Something that might be on the cut line by now. Or before the cut line for that matter. Very oh, dove. from who pet someone in Florida was asking what the speed limit is on triple M oh Vicky there we go hi Vicky speed limit really about when there is a tar road, 
speed limit is about 50 in the Kruger. I know in the Timbavati the speed limit is 50 on the main road. I'd say it's probably not as much as that on a dirt road like, like that. Um, that's, what, about 35, 30 miles an hour. Call it 25, 30 miles an hour for those of you in a mile an hour type of country. 45, 50 kilometers an hour. We can want to know if animals get hit on that road. Unfortunately, <coughs> more likely at night though. But yes, unfortunately, it is possible to find animals that have been knocked over. Morning, Ezra. How are you doing? Good, thanks. You sleep okay? Good. Okay, I'm gonna go meet Will. Okay, see you later. Have a safe journey. the corrugation on that road on Triple M to know how fast cars do travel on it. The trucks that come in for deliveries. Uh, they do try and police it. But it is a remote area. Right, finally got radio from Ephraim, Ephraim come in. Ephraim, can you give me an update, please? Okay, copy, thanks. Uh, we're still at access. Karula went down into Elephant Plains. Yeah, affirmative. There's lots of movers there. Yeah, I didn't have radio comms there. There's one Strovanin that she went into. I don't think she's gone far off the road, but I lost visual. And then there are a couple of other movers from other lodges there now, trying to look for her. <coughs> Maybe we can get them on channel 3. So they're still heading east. Oh, okay, I'll see if I can make it, thanks. I'm already on Drakensberg Drive. We've still got a considerable distance to go to try and get there. Who's this eagle in a tree? A Wahlberg. Wahlberg. And the darker phase, that's the male and the female, you can see that smaller male on the right. coming out of the bushes. I don't want to spend too much time here and I do want to keep on moving because we've got something else to go and find and maybe if we're lucky we'll catch them up on Cheetah Cut Line. They're moving fast as they always do. 
don't want to give it away just yet. And then some of you have already picked up from radio chatter what it could be. <coughs> what a wonderful morning. Pity we didn't get to see the lion. Real pity. But I mean, we don't need to see anything else after Karula and the Cubs. Very little that can match that in terms of excitement and enjoyment. Yeah, or I have to tell you something though that for the first time ever with Karula and I pulled off the road and she came past me and she looked at me I had the feeling that she could just take one step and one swipe because I was too close to her and the kind of thing that a leopard would do heart started beating just a little bit faster there Linda. Oh, I'm getting back to the cubs. She says, Linda's saying that one of the cubs had a forehead marking similar to that of Indunas. I have to be honest, I, mean, I was looking at them, I was, I was just seeing whole cub. I wasn't looking at anything. There was one moment, the first moment when they came past the vehicle right next to me. Uh, gosh think so. Quite sure. Kind of like 65, 70, maybe 75 percent sure. And the other one, maybe it's because I want to, want to be a boy and want to be a girl. The other one I'm thinking is maybe a, a little boy, just the way it looked like. He had a little bulge under his tail. It was just so overwhelming to be with them. It just, it, it, I think it's going to be a while before all of that wears off, that excitement wears off, and you can actually get down to looking a little bit closer. I mean, we can go through the footage. I'm going to go through the footage and uh, see some of Seb's photos. But uh, at the time that I'm looking at them, no. Road. We're getting to go past Chalapan, onto Batelier Road, and head up towards Cheetah Cut Line. I'm thinking maybe we should have done that after Karula, but we got to see the hyena. I thought maybe we'd get to see a lion, but they've all moved in much further west from that carcass. We can't even, we didn't even get to see the carcass very well.
Rhino tracks. That's an interesting rhino track. Going back the other way. Rhino probably going to pop out at the dam sometime this morning. Patrick found tracks yesterday heading south. Catherine is going to be very upset. Patrick was complaining yesterday. She's the only one that hasn't seen Garula and the Cubs. Junction coming through the Milwaukee. Where are you now? Uh, I'm not copying your car again in two minutes. Lovely big bull. He didn't even bat an eyelid. Beautiful big bull. And one big one, Northern Glob, Batelier Road. Uh, just on the eastern side of the moor. Can we get a drum roll please? Can we get some some of that suspense thriller music going? The, yeah. I normally come up with the wrong tune completely. I was trying to do the Jaws tune the other day to the crocodile as he slipped into the water. And all I could come up was the Pink Panther. <laughs> we need a tune from I don't know. Just need a drum roll, please.
that comes south on Brighton Creek. Any minute now, any minute now, past that big tree. In the road, there. It's a wild dog. African hunting dogs. I was just stopping now briefly, and I'm going to move into a better position. Thank you very much, Henry. Oh my word! Third major predator of the morning, and it's sun's belly barely even four fingers off of the horizon okay we're looking we've got a bad angle here dogs are quite relaxed they're on the ground we're gonna move get it to a better position to be able to get some better light on them morning children Just the two of you. Hello, beautiful. They might be small in stature, but these are very efficient predators. They have probably the best stamina. Okay, let me move again, Seb. Beautiful morning light coming through his coat there. Wolves. Let's see if we can try and get in there. 
patentes. Three, I can see three now. Six, another one waking up. Another one there, seven. They spread out. Maybe starting to get on the move. I want to hear. I don't want to be changing a slack when we should be following dogs. Oh, that's a, that's a big one. Station in this middle lock. Yeah, go.
Two of them coming out now. Get the line up on Kamka, around to the entrance. Can I get an update for this Kankan or Narasra? Hello little one. A male. And another male. Hello boys. <coughs> They're listening. Could be other members of the pack that are on the hunt. And the third one coming out now. And off they go. That's, once they start moving, we get caught off road. And like now, when we were off road, they started moving and. They can cover incredible distances in a short space of time. How are you going, boys? <laughs> behind you. In front of us, behind us. Up and down. Trying to locate the rest of the pack, which might have gone off hunting after something, which is why they're up and down like this. Franklin shouting south of us. Sorry, Seb. Uh. Okay. 
but I'm afraid it's going to have to try and keep up with them. And I'm sorry Golden Orbs, but this is one moment when I'm going to have to do this. Yeah, most of the pack is here now. Going back down to the road. Hello Laurie, do I think these wild dogs are hunting right now? Yes Laurie, wild dogs are always on the hunt, when they're on the move like this, they're always on the hunt. They will also kill and eat on the run. I've seen wild dog take five young impala in the space of several minutes. And I didn't stop moving the vehicle for one moment during those hunting forays that they did. They're constantly on the move. urinating and unbelievable not even his territory and he's got to block the site Everyone come in. Ephraim, Ephraim come in. Henry come in. Joe in Vancouver asking for a difference between or in strength I suppose between hyena and wild dog we're on Mumba Road now I wonder if we can't there's a pipe in the road that they're not very sure of so hyena a lot bigger and a lot stronger than 
than wild dog but the dogs will run can run further they've got a lot more stamina and they will range up larger areas than uh, than hyena that's a pipeline there used to be a pipeline here in the ground underground running f from the top of this ridge all the way down to the dip in the Mawati and that pipeline has been ripped up by elephants and uh, Dogs are playing with it now. Um, not a very nice thing to see in the middle of the bush. But uh, get removed one of these days. Elephant of Bina, you can see this marula tree is being pulled apart. This is very recent that this pipe has been pulled out like that. Big piece of marula that's been pushed pulled down. Wil leaves haven't even wilted yet. Still quite fresh. four, five, six dogs. thought I might have seen a seventh, but I obviously didn't. Unless some more of the pack is elsewhere. Something that's in the bush that they're listening to. Very strong urine smell. There's a female, this one. One, two, three. No, there are seven. Three. Dogs are mobile south again, straight towards Gary Main, but uh, it should take them about maybe 10 minutes or so to get there. I'd say maybe 3 or 4 minutes. Okay, we're going to do this. I'm not supposed to, I don't think. Take this little track on the edge of Torchwood. I'm not sure if this still constitutes the fire break. Ephraim, do you copy? Yeah. Uh, Ephraim, who's this my daughter that's in this my Dutch lock? Armando for Armando. It was Joe that was asking would they be on the hunt. He's constantly looking out for things. There's always... Hold on a sec. Yeah, go. Yes, I know, it's just he's being my Fukunyan in the sighting. So, I'm so 
so far I have seen a total of seven dogs. And as I was saying, when they're on the run like this, they will hunt whatever they come across. That's why every now and then one dog goes off somewhere and rejoins as this one is now coming back into the pack. Once they're running like this, anything that they come across, they could potentially go into full hunt mode. But this is a very economical trot that they have now. It's actually, it, 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 it uses less energy than running, less energy than, in some cases, there's a, there's a certain gait, there's a certain speed that they can move that is the most efficient, this kind of trot stiff-legged trot. I suppose it couldn't be. They can cover more ground quicker than walking. And if there's anything up ahead, put those ears, the ears like radar dishes, that they, they focus on things, they're likely to immediately go into hunting mode. So while they're not actively hunting now because there's nothing to really hunt, they will switch as soon as they see something. Move up closer. Ah. 
heading towards Gary Main. And they're going to probably carry on heading south. Good shade for them to lie up in. Edge of a little open area. the last glimpse of them before they disappear. Minor. Asking if the cooler and the cubs are safe from the dogs. Very much so. She is a couple of miles away. In any case, all three of them can take to a tree. One of the leopard's best defences is being in an area where there are good trees, because she is, that little drainage line she went into, some amazing trees there for them to climb. So, that's about it for the dogs. They could be splitting up to, to hunt now, some of them heading up Gary Main. They're hunting. Gone off after something and and that guide shouldn't be a guide. Anyway. Hmm? No. Not allowed to go there no. No. This is our topmost corner, southeast corner, and that's the end of that. Let's go find that elephant. Nice to see dogs again. Don't know what we're going to do this afternoon. But uh, it's certainly been a phenomenal morning. Could have got a fourth predator if we'd seen that lion. And as predicted, all this cloud coming in, the moisture that's now starting to evaporate, condense up high. We've 
certainly covered some ground from that lion kill, the buffalo carcass which is in the, I guess you could say the far western edge of our traversing area, we're in the far eastern edge Dutch have crossed south into a cross car remain into wherever that is. Oh parrots, I haven't had parrots for a few days. Somewhere in one of these Maruba trees. Ah, uh, yeah, above us. A lot of starlings too. And a roller just thrown into the mix. Excuse me, Dove. Fresh elephant tracks here too. There seem to be elephant everywhere today. Pity we didn't get to see that group on the near the lion kill. Very big cow with them. Take on that door of uh, spaghetti crossing. This much. Steenbuck up ahead. We don't see Steenbuck too often anymore because the grasses are so long and off it goes. 
before we even get to see it. We'll start seeing them more when it starts drying up. Dogs were here. Well, I'm glad we saw them. I would have been highly upset if we'd come across wild dog tracks and followed them and eventually found that they'd crossed over without even seeing them. So, well worth the little bit of a rush to get up here. I knew that any moment they could cross over the boundary, either to the east or to the south. They do cover so much ground in such a short space of time. I think I've said that already a few times. Hello Shelly's You gonna come out on the road for me? No A pair of Shelly's Franklins Not very common, well we don't see them very often Oh you're right here, I could reach out and grab you But I won't noise they make. I'll drink your beer, I'll drink your beer. Central Road. But we're not going to do Central Road. We are going to go back to Batelier. Back to the bull on Batelier. Any more bees to add to that sentence? Back to the big bull on Batelier Road. And, well, there's a Batelier flying above us. That's a good sign. <laughs> and opening up a can of worms there, or a box of spiders, should I say. And wants to know what kind of spiders we get here. And do they bite? And I think it's a it's a bit of a difficult question because there are probably several hundred species of spiders. In fact, anywhere you are in the world, you will find several hundred species of spiders. I think spiders are probably one of the most numerable creatures. There are probably more spiders per square meter of bush than there are other insects combined. And the most prominent spider at the moment, of course, is the big golden orb spider. The large araneomorphs that spin webs. The orb spiders are a very large group of spiders, and there are so many different types of orb spiders. And that is only those spiders that spin the orb web, the very typical round orb, orb shape. There are many other web spinning spiders and there are many species of those different web species spiders. There are the tropical tent spiders, there are sheet, orb, sheet web spiders, there are scaffold web spiders, there are community nest spiders, jumping spiders, the sulpicids, there are enough of those and there's almost for every species of ant there's a species of jumping spider or solstice spider that mimics the ant. There are 
wolf spiders and free range hunting spiders and baboon spiders which are very large you saw my show last night I showed a baboon spider what's the size of my hand next to my hand um, interesting spiders like the net casting spider yes it makes a net it doesn't make a conventional web but it spins is very elastic and very neat little net and it dangles down on its thread and it casts a net, uses those very long legs of it to throw a net over its prey. Also known as the ogre-faced spiders. They have these huge eyes. There's another spider called the bolus spider. Very tiny little spider. And I reckon that's where man learned how to hunt using a bolus. You what does a pair of balls on the end of a string that they throw it and the aboriginals in Australia used as a, as a hunting method well the spider does the same thing it has this glob of sticky silk on the end of a thread and it spins it around and when it feels a moth or something nearby actually it hangs upside down and it spins this little bolus on the end of a thread until it hooks the, the moth and that sticky glob of silk Fishing spiders are interesting because they have very fine hairs on the tips of their legs that are, allow them to sit on the top of the surface tension of the water. And they can feel the vibrations of tadpoles or fish or aquatic insects just under the surface. And they're able to dive under the surface and catch small fish, tadpoles, the fishing spiders, then you get other subaquatic spiders, the bell spider, the diving bell spider, who takes down a bubble of air and makes a silk diving bell. And it releases that bubble of air into that diving bell and that's where it lives, underwater. Invented the aqualung a few million years ago. Lace orb weavers, crabellet spiders, comb footed spiders. And while I'm looking for this elephant, I'll think of all sorts of other spiders bark spiders, leaf spiders, money spiders. Money spiders are so called because they're thought to bring you luck when you see a money spider. They have very strange, ornate. Protrusions off of the out of the off the abdomen. You who, Mr. Elephant? I know you're here somewhere. I don't know if he's going to be upset with me because I ignored him earlier. I just went straight past him without even paying him his due. I did say good morning. I'm sure he heard that and felt that. So he was here. I'm not expecting him to still be here, but I'm hoping we can find out where he went. He was facing that way, down into the riverbed. So he could have gone down that way. We're going to have a look for some tracks towards Nyala Road South. too far. It was feeding on a lot of vegetation.
Little Tembo, new Apisan. That's a Eevee. Henry, come in. Yeah, please give me an update. Lost half an hour. Yeah, can you give me an update, please? Okay, yeah, all the gala on the on the good health south. Okay, thanks. Uh, nobody found that in blow. Uh, we did put a one on the cut line. Oh, no, even if they didn't it, probably. But there was one on Bachelier Road. Yeah, we, we did put a one on the cut line. So it's fine, so yeah. 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 Okay, now I was just wondering what happened to this one near Chalapan. Yeah, they crossed the cheetah cut line. Hmm. Do a little bit. Vulture's nest and see, otherwise we're going to go back to Chilipan. I think that's where he might have gone. Maybe we'll just take a look and see what's happened at that giraffe carcass. Just to, to get, oh, he has some tracks. Could have come this way. Looks like he may have come this way. Unless he's still moving 
no. But it looked like he went through off the road over there. Which puts him in a very dense pen, patch of bush felt. And just have a look at this giraffe carcass, just to sort of put closure to it. There's still some vultures hanging around, believe it or not. And we're several days down the line. And, uh, well... I think it'll just be interesting to see, after a few days, what it looks like. That part. We did go past one entrance down there. I thought there was another one here at this porchwood. I'm stopped there, we might be able to hear this elephant feeding. Vultures on the ground. How are they still getting anything out of it? Only they know. A hooded vulture in that tree. Almost purely a skeleton right now. You can see right through the rib cage. But just I would think perhaps for some interesting to see the progression of, or rather the the, the progression of decomposition, the progression of consumption. So what we need now is some heavy rain to soften a lot of that and then you'll get a lot of the insects that'll come in and, and clean it up a lot more than the vultures can. Carcass beetles and millipedes, even giant African land snail would come and find something.
Right. Fortunately, not smelling as bad as it was the first couple of days. I guess some of these vultures are waiting to waiting to catch thermals and move on from here. from this angle. Just a glimpse. Is it good enough? Sorry, giraffe. Hello Mike, in Chicago. Chicago. Point out Chicago. Sorry spider. I really apologize for that. Mike in Chicago. Are the wild dog normally around this time of year? How many do I think are in the pack? This elephant, are we going the wrong way? This elephant went north. I'm going to turn around again. Mark, there's no real time of the year for dogs. Dogs are around any time of the year. We're likely to see them any time. Wild dog probably cover an area I would say maybe even up to 20 times, maybe even more, 50 times the size of Juma. Okay. If, you, if you sort of can imagine, no, maybe not 50 times, maybe 30 times. 30,000 hectares. It depends, you know, they, they, I can't really say. It depends. It depends on the availability of prey. In some areas where prey species are a lot thinner and, and, and further spread out and it's slightly a drier and less vegetated part of the world, you'll find the dogs will roam over much larger territories, or much, much larger areas. And then dense areas of the Sabi sand like this probably a little bit smaller because of prey species and also maybe because of densities of wild dog population but the chances of having I mean, any any day of the year we could have wild dog coming through here I mean we've got the dogs now or we just had the dogs now it's quite possible that they could come through again next week it might be possible that we don't see them for six weeks there's no regularity to it there's no routine, there's no way of knowing. 
I'm not too sure. I didn't get a good look at them. I mean, saw them mostly from behind. And I have to be honest, we don't see the dogs here often enough to get to know individuals, although it is very easy. It's easier to get to know individual wild dog than it is to get to know, say, lion or, or leopard, because wild dog patterns are so distinct and so unique to each dog. And in places that I have lived with dogs before, I've gotten to know individuals within a pack because I'm able to take photographs and match them up. So I'm not too sure which dogs these are. I'm not, they could be part of that very big pack. There's a pack of about 21 or so or more. There's another smaller pack. Hello, children. Some mongoose. Dwarf mongoose. Yes, hello everybody. I'm sorry, just disturbing you. Do 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 do. Took it all. Um. Lost track of where this elephant went. We can try Twin Dam's Road. So I'm not too sure how many in this pack. There might be a pack that we don't see very often at all. And it might just be this, them, but I doubt it. I think they just didn't hunting party from another from the main pack one of the reasons why photographs are so necessary to be able to keep profiles of individuals and then you only have to really identify one individual to know it's the same pack Nina had been here this morning.
of animal traffic. Something making ripples here. And I don't think it was hippo. Hippos are all up that end. There was something that went into the water as we were coming through the dip because I could see the ripples. Ah, that's who it is. It is a kingfisher having a bath. Okay, kingfisher. Good one. Got me. No Michel and Duna down there. Maybe there's a monitor lizard sunning itself somewhere down here. Sometimes there is. There is a gone. Tiny baby monitor was on that log. Tiny baby. Because you don't get very really big baby monitors. Actually, a foam nest down there, fairly new foam nest. Tree frogs are trying to capitalize on the last little bit of summer. That looked like a fairly newborn monitor, which means that they're probably other other youngsters around here somewhere.
try and get to Chelapan and see if we can see if that an elephant came across this way. Somehow it looked like it might have headed up towards Nyala Road. It was crisscrossing Bolts' nest. I'm not sorry we we didn't stop and see him because we would have missed the wild dog if we did. But I am a little upset with myself that we didn't say hello properly. But there's still this afternoon. We don't get him now. Rhino tracks I saw earlier this morning. I wonder where they went because there's nothing closer to Gari. They must have gone through to Philemon's Dip, maybe. of the vultures flying now from that carcass could be because there's thermal there's a thermal or there are some thermals allowing them to lift but I can't help but think that maybe something there that's chased them off who knows lifting high into the sky one of the vultures okay about time a crocodile. Oh, of course the crocodile is not here. I keep forgetting.
thought I'd just come say goodbye to the crop, but... I forgot that it's headed south. Maybe we're going to have a look around Twin Dams later today and see if the crocodile didn't maybe end up down there. Oh, wow. Greenback heron. Just if we can look at that while I'm saying goodbye. It's got a it's just called a frog. One of my frogs. Greenback heron has landed in a tree. My name is Mark. You've been with us on Wild Earth Safari. And as we say goodbye to you this morning, a greenback heron that we don't see very often with a frog in its mouth. Seb's been on camera. Pat been in final control. To join us again for our next safari. Heron's gone. Bye everyone.